Mm-hmm. I think that's where we met, right? Yeah, like right after the, I, I got off the phone with you, I called my manager. <laughs> I was telling him what was going on. And he's like, Jackie, don't call him back. And I was like, as I was pressing you? connect with LinkedIn. <laughs> I won't, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, I'm not going to do it. He doesn't know that I'm talking to you right now. Like I consider it oh telling my God. Him, but I was like, no, it'd just be weird. Hey, I just started a podcast with this random dude I met on the phone that I was supposed to pitch for this thing. And you know, we're best friends now. Thank you. Welcome to another week of dysfunction. Here's Jackie and Matt. My brother and my father are joining us today. Dad, say hi. Hi. Uh, and Tim, say hi. Hello, everybody. His dad is named Bill, and Did then there's you? Tim, and then there's Matt. So they all decided to be named after white people. <laughs> <laughs> white people from the Bible. Most oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. No, uh, let me tell you about Matt and Tim. Okay. Uh, you are the one that named I can't wait their, to hear this. Their mother is from New York. Okay. And uh, her sister had four kids, but the two of them, there was uh, Christina and Peter, but in New York, it was pronounced Christina and Peter, (laughs) uh, because they put ours where they're not and take away ours where they are. And so I didn't want names that had either an R that could be removed or a space to put an R where it wasn't. Mm-hmm. So that's why it was uh, Matt and Tim, because, you know, you, you can't, uh, you don't have to worry about the R. That makes sense. That's New Yorkers that's dropping, dropping bells and adding them. Christina and Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Christina and Peter. That's interesting. Oh, and then, and then they had the, the next one, Ariana. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's worse. <laughs> yeah, it is. I, I guess it's like when you're naming kids, you have these thoughts like, I can't name them this because this reminds me of this, or this person yep. fucked me over one time. Yeah. I don't like that name. It sucks that people can ruin a whole name Tim, for you. Tim, do you have children? Yeah, actually, I have uh, two boys, uh, Dylan Tim. and Adrian. <laughs> he has left the building. It's okay. Tim building has two children. You saw a picture of one of them. You know the picture with the uh, Adrian that I sent you? Wait a He's second. gonna marry my daughter. Yes, that's the one that you're marrying to your daughter, right? The one that yes. I sent you a picture of. They're getting married. They're gonna have the cutest Asian, Colombian, Italian babies. Oh my god, that would make a cute kid. Do you speak uh, several languages, Jackie? I, yes, I do. I'm so do you? Jealous. No, I had Jesuits in high school. Uh, at Latin and Greek, and not uh, okay. modern Greek, classical Greek. That's amazing, though. You know, and you probably understand multiple languages at that point. Correct? Well, vaguely, yeah. And I took took three semesters of Spanish uh, because I had a lot of uh, Hispanic clients. So I figured, you know, but I need yeah. I know that I needed to, you know, like I needed to do an immersion thing if I was going to really speak a language. And so I'm learning Japanese now, which is really cool. And I am oh, going to awesome. get to, you know, I'm going to get to live there and and I'll learn it. It'll be wave goodbye to your Spanish. <laughs> All right. But you said clients. What did you do previous to now? Law. Oh, okay. My mom made him become a lawyer, or our mom, right, Tim? <laughs> made him become a lawyer when they got married and had us because she said she will not raise another family with a musician. <laughs> she didn't raise a family with a musician? No, it, she will not raise another family, this time using a musician <laughs> as a husband. Oh. What does that mean? She will not raise last- another family. And she will not raise a family with a musician. They were really two independent thoughts. No, because she would raise another family as long as you had a lucrative job. And so she asked you politely to become a lawyer. (laughs) Yeah, you know, when I met her, she said, uh, I said, what do you do for a living? She said, I have a real job. Ooh. Ooh, that stings a little. So what'd she do at the time (laughs) when y'all met? She was a secretary. Or executive assistant, you know. Okay. Office, la- office lady. So how did you guys meet? The rumor in the families they met at an AA meeting. That didn't okay. happen, apparently. My dad and mom both deny it. 
No, we didn't. I, I was working for uh, a company in New York called the More Entertainment Group, which is a really interesting story. It was run by this lady named Barbara Moore, who was the comptroller for Maryland Togs, which is a, a little girl's clothing company. Mm -hmm. And she financed the company by embezzling $25 million Holy shit. from Maryland Togs and got away with it because she kept double books and Maryland Togs was, would, would have been in trouble with the IRS for not reporting uh, cash receipts. And so basically when she got busted, they just had a, what's called a Mexican standoff. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's politically correct, but I'll, I'll let us that. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, not to cut in on, on your comment. But anyway, this lady threw a party. And and Jean had a friend who was one of uh, one of the songwriters in the company. I was, uh, you know, like a vice president, and uh, I was doing audio engineering and writing and uh, recording and things like that. Because I I were a professional musician for for, oh, no. uh, for the longest time. Yes, I was I was a rock star. I made it. I made a, I mean, was I made a, a great penis? living. Penis. Penis. <laughs> yeah, penis. Yeah, I mean, in in, uh, in in the early eighties, piano player is referred to as a penis. If you're not, <laughs> I am. But the way he said it, I couldn't help myself. Well, yeah, it was, you it was should try to give an emphasis on the pianist. But if you want to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> pianist. Yeah. There you go. What are you doing, son? European. Okay. And so oh she threw a party and Jean went to help this, went with this lady. And uh, so we met at this party. And my question to her was, so uh, what do these people have that I don't have other than uh, youth hair and leather pants? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so she liked me because she thought I, I made her laugh. Yeah. Aww. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. At one point, the you know the you know the family was doing really well, and and I I had read that uh, families that do well usually have a theme, and and our family was our theme was humor. Yeah. Oh, I haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> you got to joke through everything, otherwise, what's the point? Oh. Yeah. No. no. Yeah, no, I like those expressions. Yeah, no, and no, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. So, Tim, you, you started saying something, and you got cut off by your dad. Oh, yeah. No, I apologize. Go ahead. No, he was finishing a story. Yeah, so I was just uh, letting you guys know I fixed the internet situation. That probably wouldn't happen again. And to uh, jump back to your question, I have two uh, boys, seven and five. I'll learn their names eventually. <laughs> No, I think that was Jim Gaffney. But anyway, um, the names are, are uh, Dylan and Adrian. And okay. um, we chose them uh, because they were both uh, water-based. Um, what? Th you know, what, th there's a meaning behind every name, even though okay. most people don't understand it just by hearing the name. And mm -hmm. uh, we were in Tokyo at the time, so we thought a Japanese name might be more appealing than an English name. And basically, mm -hmm. she was going for... Kai, which is, uh, you know, you write the ocean in Japanese characters and you read it Kai for, for a boy's name. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then we decided we were moving to Arizona and we had tossed around a couple of English names. And I think actually dad or Matt, you know, said, hey, Dylan's a, a strong name. And I looked at the, well, I was talking to mom and she said, well, you know, what do the names mean? And that didn't even, come, you know, come across to me as a, a, a something to look into, but when I looked into the different names, you know, when I looked into Dylan, it's Child of the Sea, which basically was what Sachiko wanted to name, uh, excuse me, Sachiko's my wife, uh, mm -hmm. and she wanted to name him in the first place, and I thought, well, there you go. So that's kind of how he was decided, and then uh, with Adrian, mm -hmm. it was just, we, had, we were having a second kid coming, we were living in the States, and the idea was, well, let's have another ocean-based name, and Adrian was a good name. I've known a couple cool people named Adrian, and... Uh, yeah, so that's where we got those two names. And, and I remember I, I suggested Adrian. I mean, uh, Dylan. Right? Uh oh. Or, yeah, that or, wasn't me. I'm pretty know. sure it was you, Dad. 
Yeah. We were discussing names. I, I may not have been the one that suggested it, but, you know, we were talking about it, and I really like Dylan, so I, I was really happy when you picked the name Dylan. I, I think I suggested I, I, I Matt, felt, Matt both times. <laughs> I, I felt I like you should have a Matt. Well, and, and the nice thing being back in Japan, even though they have these names that, you know, is difficult for everybody to, under, to understand, you know, because they're not usual names in Japan. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody in Japan in the time that I had, you know, left, they decided everybody's going to start naming their kids, you know, they all want their kids to stand out. So they're all giving them these crazy names that nobody's ever heard before. Oh, I mean, like the kanjis don't match up with the readings, and it's like, well, actually, oh, you know, wow. you, you call it ateji. It's like, well, this is the kanji. It should Are read like this, but I'm just going to say it actually reads like this. And so everybody's got these far out names. So people are like, Dylan? They're like, all right, that's easy. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I remember suggesting Matt for both of your kids because I was like, somebody's got to carry on the family name. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> if it's a boy, Matt. If it's a girl, yeah. Matt. Matt. Let's George Matt. Foreman this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a about to be one year old, and her name is Artemis after the. We've Greek already mom. married her. Too. Oh, yeah, sorry. They're, Before they're getting married. You, your yeah. son, and my daughter, Adrian, going to be Adrian? Cute, oh, okay. cute Asian Colombian Italian babies. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Exactly. That's interesting. <laughs> exactly, it's going to happen. It should be beautiful. I know. My daughter has hazel eyes, so she, she might come out with green eyes. So does Tim. Then there we go, hazel-eyed babies. Yeah, explain this one to me. I have. I was married twice. Okay. Both wives were, you know, brown-eyed, dark-haired women. And <laughs> <laughs> they, they, what else would they, they be named? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh. <laughs> and, and I have a, a left-handed, non-brown-eyed kid from each one. Oh, wow. That's you know, interesting. Which you is, yeah. Dominant traits, that's why. Well, and I looked into, uh, uh, I'm left-handed, my wife is left-handed, both of my kids are right-handed. And so I looked what? into, uh, you know, what causes left-handedness. Mm -hmm. And I read in a medical <laughs> journal, it's like, well, it kind of depends on the parents, but not really. And it kind of depends on the gender, but not really. But mostly the medical community has decided that the mainest, you know, the biggest factor of left-handedness is brain damage. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> that, that, that was in a medical Thank journal. You. Oh, gosh. So, Jackie. <laughs> so I was left-handed. I was born left-handed. I wrote left-handed the beginning of my life but my parents are Catholic. <laughs> so my uncle got tied to the chair while I figured out how to write with my right hand. That's unfortunate. <laughs> so apparently I brain damage. I was raised Catholic, Jackie, so I Yeah, I so understand. you understand. Yeah, and... Uh, well, left means sinister. <laughs> yes. It does, apparently. No, the other way around. <laughs> sinister is the Latin word for left. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sinister means left. Right. You've been talking yeah, to Jackie right. too much. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, this is going to be forever, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, probably. Any future dinners, got it. <laughs> it's written. In, it's written in sand now. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going to live forever on the internet. It's written in sand. <laughs> oh God, oh, Tim, how were your classes yesterday? My classes yesterday, uh, they were wonderful. I, um, Good. So to give anybody who's uh, listening a little... It's just us three. <laughs> backstory. Well, okay. Uh, I, I run an English services company on the island, meaning I do anything English-related as I'm on a small island in Japan. Uh, yesterday, I had my uh, youngster classes. I've got, you know, I teach the youngest student when she entered. She was eight months. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Oh, so it's uh, on Saturday mornings, it's just a whirlwind, but it's a lot of, you know, singing and jumping around and going crazy. So uh, it's fun. A lot of energy. <laughs> then she, she's talking. not speaking yet, is she? Well, so the first class is a baby class. There's two of them. Uh, the younger one was eight months. The older one was one year. And the one-year-old is now speaking. I mean, she's one year and so many months. Uh, I'd have to look into that. But yeah, she's speaking. She's got colors and a couple other things down. I'm slapping. Awesome. Gosh. 
Yeah. What language would you have? Through, well, she speaks Span. Well, she will speak Spanish. Uh, my parents right. only really speak Spanish. My dad and my stepmom. And then right. here at home, I speak to her in English and Spanish. I would like for her to learn Italian. And I watch a lot of my shows and movies in Korean. It's just a phase I'm going through. So hopefully she'll pick that up. That'd be cool. Okay. That would be cool. Watching movies in Korean be a phase you're going through. <laughs> well, it's been a two to three year old phrase. Three year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get ready to jump on her, guys. This is going to be good. <laughs> no. We'll, we'll be nice. Go ahead. Take your time. No, no, no. I would love to learn Korean. Um, would love to learn Japanese. I know Italian. I speak a little bit of Arabic and American Sign Language. Damn. Yeah. Overachiever. Um, Show off. <laughs> no, no, that's not why. It's just my best friend. I have another friend other than Matt. He is you? Uh, apparently, um, he's from Dubai and he only speaks Arabic. And him and I have been friends oh. for seven years now. Wow. That's yeah. most of your life. <laughs> hey. Kidding. No. Kidding. <laughs> not that young. I know. You're, you're what? You've got the wisdom of a 72 year old, right, Dad? Oh, thank you. That's right. Sorry. Oh, you mean everything I say wrong doesn't go against my age? Not to me. <laughs> you to me. Well, no, because I mean, I, I used to believe that the thing was to come to fruition. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you're not alone, but we're just going to have to take it on. You. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, let's, let's, let's talk about Matt's... Uh, uh, <laughs> How to shush somebody. Wait, what oh, do you mean? Oh, God. All right, so our dad played like a... a hold on, uh, hold like on. Like a long hold game, on, hold on. Like a, like hold a long on. con <laughs> while we were growing up. Okay. He did a bunch of things slightly wrong on purpose in front of us, just seeing if we would pick it up and notice that it's not the way it's done. So you really fucked with your children, Bill. <laughs> oh, really bad. <laughs> yeah, I did. It, but it wasn't horrible, like... You know, don't say sorry when you feel that way. It wasn't like horrible, like oh, thing no. like that. Matt needs to learn how to sit, stop saying sorry. Well, that's weird because I don't have that issue. And I remember dad specifically saying, Tim, stop apologizing for everything. Really? Yeah. So why do and you have that, that issue? One thing that he would do was tell us that when you shush, it's like, you know, you put one Here, thing Here, I sent her right? a picture. <laughs> okay. Did you send her yeah. a picture? Yeah, he did, yeah. I just, basically, just now. He, he had one finger along the side of his nose, and then basically the circle of fingers that you make with your thumb in your uh, middle, that would be around mm -hmm. his mouth. Yeah, so you like... how Matt shushed people till 26? Till, no, oh till like God. three years ago, pretty much. Yeah, he used to shush us by putting his index finger against his nostril, like, instead of up against his mouth, so... It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of sad. <laughs> so I remember Wait. I was at like, I was at a company outing. Did you get the picture? Uh, where'd you send it to? Oh, just your, your phone. But that's all right. Oh. Um, I was at a company yeah. outing and I, I tried to shush somebody <laughs> like jokingly. And somebody looked at me and goes, that's not how you shush people. And I was like, what are you talking about? Of course it is. This was like four years ago, maybe three, four. Oh, and I was gosh. like, I'm like, whatever. So I was driving home and I was talking to dad and I was like, you believe someone just told me I shush people wrong? And then it was just silence <laughs> for a minute. And then he was just laughing and laughing and laughing. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> hilarious. He, he taught us how to do all these things wrong in hopes that in 30 years he would get to hear about it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I think that's genius. But at the same time, you fucked your children over. <laughs> I do have a question, though. Yeah. Matt apologizes all the time. Tim does not. Why does he do that? Why does he continue to apologize and say sorry to people for no reason? I don't know. <laughs> but, because, but Tim just told me that you told him to stop doing that. Yeah. Although I was raised Catholic, I do not play the guilt game. I, sure. I, I figured out how to get out of it. And it used to piss Jean off. She couldn't yeah. guilt trip me, you know? Because so what's the use of guilt tripping someone? Hmm? What's the to use of To make them feel bad. But why? If you want to make them feel bad. Oh, but why? control them to get them to do things you, know, you want. To make them feel bad. Well, it's to make them feel bad in order to have them accomplish the thing or the task or to do what you wanted them to do. You should know place. this. Jack, but I, you're the manipulative one. <laughs> yeah, but I don't guilt trip people. There's no need to do that. So how, what's your strategy then? To get your Catholic. Guilt tripping doesn't work on me because I don't care. If I don't care in the first place, <laughs> how am I going to be able to get guilt tripped? 
Well, you have no empathy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. <Matt. laughs> Not um, no empathy, but I think, you know what I mean? It's because you're more an sympathetic with and it. empathetic. Yeah. Right. But well, wait a minute. You said you were raised Catholic. Yes. Now, are you saying that the religion does not emphasize guilt and use guilt? It as does. It's like primary directive? People I saw around me, but it never affected me because I didn't Whoa. care in the first place. Like my That's mother and my grandmother all felt guilty just because they did something, but they used it apologize for it, believe that they got forgiven, and did the same shit over again. So it just, I was like, if I keep seeing the cycle, why do I have to listen to it? Like, yeah, why well, should I, I feel guilty for a cycle that won't stop? Right. I think you see a cycle. Play the, I wasn't going to play the game either. I, 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 didn't, I didn't buy into it. So then what, no. what made you or motivated you to do something if guilt tripping doesn't work on you? Because it, wants to. it's yeah, I, I love to learn things, don't you? Everybody does. Yeah. We're yeah. born with, we're born with a, you know, like this curiosity. With yeah, we're born with curiosity with a thirst for knowledge and and you know, it's the world that takes it away from us. I agree with that. Cuz cuz they want us to be good employees. Uh true. So Tim, does guilt tripping work on you? No. Why? It's not a, a simple one sentence answer, but to, to rephrase it, you teach people how to treat you. And so I just make sure that anybody who tries to use guilt or manipulative measures to control me, I make sure that they understand that that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Smart. Is, that's, I, I guess that would be the simpler answer. But yeah, that's basically yeah. it. Yeah. But manipulation isn't always going to be something simple like that. It's not always to control someone. It's to suggest them to make them believe that they want to do it anyways. That's inception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. But the whole point of like manipulating someone is so that you make them believe that they want to do it. Oh, that it was their idea. Yeah. Yeah, it can be. I mean, that's one approach to manipulation. Sure. There is okay. like more. Well, are we talking guilt or manipulation? There's physical. Like I think both go hand in hand. If you're guilt tripping someone, you are attempting to control. That, that's them. a form of manipulation, but that is not Correct. the entire manipulation. It's like saying yes. penne is a type of pasta, but it's not all of the pasta. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Why'd you have to go all Italian and racist with? <laughs> because she's Italian, because she'll get a pasta reference. <laughs> <laughs> because, because on my diet, I'm carb starved, and all I think about is getting. <laughs> Uh, I had pasta today for dinner. Oh, good. That's why. <laughs> See? Thanks. I needed salt in the wound. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, you Wait, what kind of diet too, are you way. on? It, you know, uh, low carb, low sugar, high protein. Oh, high fat okay. or mid fat? Uh, yeah, fats are okay. Good. That sounds delicious. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, on an interesting diet right now. I thought that you've asked me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of diet are you on? That's funny you should ask. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm now on a, a a toast and milk diet. Oh, dude, oh, okay. he's eating nothing. He'll eat like a Why? loaf of bread a day. Ew, just toast Why? it. Yeah, I know. Because it's gonna have some <laughs> vitamin. You and Adrian would get along very well. <laughs> vitamin Me deficiency. Uh, I take a vitamin B complex. That doesn't and... <laughs> mean, mean anything. How do you know there's vitamins in those? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they could well, be selling you salt or sugar pills. <laughs> Dietary supplements are not FDA approved. Yes, sir. <laughs> not, not that we need to hop on the conspiracy train this early and do our show. But, uh, you don't want to start talking I, about the lizard people? I know <laughs> this. Okay. See, Wait, I know this. They're but also, they're aliens. also, I choose to believe it. So for me, it's true. Well, oh, because it's a placebo, placebo effect. <laughs> ah. We talked about this for like an hour yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we did. That's funny. Well, that witch I, was super interesting. I choose yeah, to believe it, and so it's true. Yeah. Well, you create your own reality. That's right. Yes, sirs. And Jackie. Okay, I have another question. <laughs> Why do you guys call each other buddy? Yeah, it really throws it's Jackie it's off. It's a term of endearment. Says yeah. who? Us. It means good friend. Yeah, but y'all are related. Yeah, because we're good friends. <laughs> but but y'all are friends. And, and such, we're good friends. Okay, I don't they, understand that concept. My family doesn't do that. Yeah, well, see, I, get was along? Told, oh. I was told you can't raise, <laughs> you can't be friends to your children. Uh -huh. Right. 
And I said, why not? Right. I did, it's just another thing I didn't buy, you know. And, and I knew all along when I, when I had kids, I, I knew that, you know, uh, there was going to come a point where uh, they were going to start thinking and making decisions. And so I, I, like I always knew that. And uh, like around age 30, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they would figure out that I was, had given them incorrect information along the way, but <laughs> no. And so, you know, I, I wanted to be their friend. I wanted to enjoy them. Yeah. My dad goes with me to parties and shit. Like all my friends love him. That's awesome. Yeah. But I mean, it's, yeah, I think that works as an adult. I don't think that really works when, they are in between the ages of zero to like 13. I think after well, I 13. Zero to 25, to be honest with you. But Really? Uh, it, yeah. Why? Your brain doesn't really stop developing until 25. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's that. still always developing, but I mean, you're st- I've, I've read research that shows that you're really not done growing into an adult until 25. So I would say that that would be the time to be the parent and then be their friend. But dad, I think was more about just like enjoying us as people instead of as like trying to be the disciplinarian. We never so got who did the discipline? Sure. Well, no, that's good. I mean, th- we were disciplined, but it wasn't physical ever. It was, I mean, timeouts sometimes <laughs> groundings, but that was about it. <laughs> so your mom did all that for you guys? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and she would yell at me, like, how come I'm always the bad guy? She would, she would ask me. Because you want to be. Because it, it feels unfair. Because when you're seen as a disciplined parent, it feels unfair that, oh, why do I have to do that? And I can't enjoy the children like you can. Well, they both so could then have done don't do it. Thing. Don't do it. <laughs> and enjoy your children. And then the kids go crazy, and then what? They don't, though. I feel like if they both would have hopped on the friend train, I feel like me and Tim would have... I don't want to say ended up better, <laughs> but we definitely wouldn't have had that weird fucking mid streak like right through high school. <laughs> the, well, the drug Tim, phase. Do you yeah. had a drug phase as well? Oh yeah. <laughs> Tim, do you Tim want was to right there with me. He was my my right hand man. <laughs> no, he pleads the fifth. He's a lawyer. Oh, okay. Tim. Oh, I had, no, I I had a drug problem. On. I don't think I, he can hear us. Can he? I I was a severe alcoholic for a long time. Yeah. Of course, working at bars, you know. uh, How, like, a long time through raising your children? His first set, I think. My first family, yeah. Okay, so you do have two families. Okay. So how many children do you have? I've been been in Four that I know of. Two small children inquiries. So, sorry if I missed anything. No, you're good. Four four that I know of. (laughs) All right, got it. So, there's two pregnancies out there that you don't know of and they're going to come to you after this podcast and say are you my dad yeah <laughs> that would be well cool. i was a rock star i i had sex with a lot of women oh god uh, <laughs> i don't need to know this okay here's too much information i okay, never used i never used protection so but, it's entirely possible that i have more <laughs> children that i don't know about Ha- yeah. Would you like to do a DNA test and figure it out? I'm pretty sure there is a child out there that's curious to know what they're doing. How would him like? doing a DNA test prove that he had more children? Oh, because well, anybody else that's done the same DNA test, they would connect them and tell them both. Oh, like, yeah. Hey, just so you know. I had no idea there's DNA matches system. as your father's. Dude, 23 and me, look it up. <laughs> what were we talking about? Who just started? Oh, we were okay. talking about Tim's, Tim's drug use. Well, yeah, I wanted to know about Tim's drug use, but you were telling me how you were drinking through your first marriage. Oh, yeah. And did it affect the way that it turned out? Well, actually, I quit drinking so that uh, I could Could be a dad. Uh, Because William, my my oldest son, was uh, living in a box, and his mother couldn't control him. You know, and we, we were divorced. And I realized I couldn't take care of him if I was drunk all the time. So that, that was the main reason I, I quit drinking. That and the fact that, I, you know, I, I never wanted to live a rut, you know, like get up and do the same boring job every day. And oh, my basically my, my life was the same. It, 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 it was a rut. It, I'd wake up every morning and it was, you know, the standard three questions is where am I? Uh, you know 
how much money do I have? And, <laughs> and how much of the night before do I remember? You know, I could always remember the first two sets, but after that, it was, you know, up in the air. And yes, I was playing through all of this. And, you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and playing in, you know, in the 80s, I, I, this is the early 80s. I was making something like 80000 a year, mm -hmm. which is, you know, by today's standards, yeah, it's, yeah, it's close to 200 grand. And uh, I've been to 40 of the 50 states and, and six foreign countries, five foreign countries, wow. you know, six. all paid. You know, I mean, playing, playing piano. That's awesome. Yeah. It's like, that's the, the dream lifestyle in that time. And, and, I, and I blame my mom, even though, you know, she would say, well, I always thought it was so, something you did on the side, but by the same time, token, she sent me this stuff by uh, Napoleon Hill, was a positive mental attitude. Napoleon and, Hill's a great writer. And I remember making the decision when I was 19, I was going to be a professional musician, and if that didn't happen, I was going to die. I gave myself no alternative, um, and and it worked. Well, the no safety well, net makes sure that you don't rely on the safety net. Yeah. I mean, me similarly, I I decided I was gonna. I mean, having said this now, it might sound incorrect, but at the time, I told myself I was going to become a, a professional comedian, and by the technical definition, I did become a professional comedian <laughs> yeah he he got paid to tell jokes what do you mean i don't understand. i was so proud <laughs> just stand -up comedy. i did stand-up comedy i did stand-up comedian whoa i didn't know that yeah yeah thank you matt <laughs> no it's he was yeah he quit kind of not really he had to move to japan where it's not that big so he's not on it as much and now <laughs> so now i just tell everyone he does magic and teaches imaginary saxophone <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> um, that's amazing though it's it's something i'll get back to after i've done you know without getting uh ridiculously deep for no reason you know i i feel a, a calling here like i'm on this island at this time to help everybody with english and once i've fulfilled that then i can get back to the comedy but yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So they mentioned to me that you did drugs as well around the same time Matt did. Did yeah. you do all the same ones he did? Or no. what like what <laughs> stopped you? Wait, yes you did. <laughs> did you not? Not to the extent that you did. No, not to the extent. But the same Wait, drugs. explain. I went off the flying handle. <laughs> uh, so you right. had so control, say, but say, he had control. Say you eat a pound of beef. And say somebody else <laughs> eats 200 pounds of beef. <laughs> if somebody says, did you eat beef? It's like, well, yeah, I did, but. <laughs> uh, so is that you a bad joke? You... That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't have the addiction that Matt did? No, I, 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 just I trying wouldn't. To hang out with me. I, yeah, it was more of a connection to Matt because I remember when, uh, you know, marijuana came into the picture and first I was basically just frightened but it was like oh no do i tell mom and dad or do i just be cool with it to be cool with matt and um then it just kind of went out from there and then when things got a little too scary it was I like see. i gotta get out of this <laughs> environment or i'm gonna end up in prison so i decided to move to japan wow then i came three days later <laughs> <laughs> so you just completely left matt like go through that and you and he happened to just follow did you guys quit at that time like or matt did yeah. you quit okay. yeah yeah so you did cold that was the point of the, the japan trip yeah uh-huh oh, wow. we we're supposed to go there for uh, just i don't know a few months work with our older brother at a restaurant um but then we ended up enrolling in school and just staying for years did met his wife we at that bar park remember tim <laughs> yeah dude. of course that place is dope this lady would roll out this giant like uh, table just filled with alcohol to the middle of the children's park like every night. <laughs> and oh, we'd just go like sit What's around it? on like... Let's say a children's park. It was a park. <laughs> What's an yeah, adult the park though? <laughs> the children's park makes it sound really bad. Does it? Yes. Well, no, because adult, adult park alcohol. makes it sound like it's filled with dildos. <laughs> no, no, no. An adult, <laughs> adults drunk at a children's park watching children mm -hmm. play. No, this was at 11 at night. 
This was like midnight. No, children okay. were not. <laughs> it was a children's park during the day, though. There were like swings and like horses and shit. Like the, oh, not gosh. the real horses, the, the springy horses. Yes, Matt, I understand. <laughs> Maybe it was an adult park. <laughs> <laughs> Do your pictures come up every time you talk? Is that how that works? Yes, yes sir. Yeah, Sorry. and I don't have a picture, so hey, it here, doesn't I can, show up. If you want me to, to fix this, I can, I can fix it quite Oh, no, I guess I can't because we don't have the audio. <laughs> can't do the spotlight. No, there's an option for spotlight where it's just, it, it focuses on yours, but I guess since we don't have videos going. Um, yes, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, not wait, to get too that? far off track, what, what were we spiraling off of? Oh, we were spiraling off of me eating 200 pounds of beef and you eating one. But I want to say this. Yeah. Despite you saying that, do you not remember you getting your own self kicked out of jazz band <laughs> that had nothing to do with me? <laughs> yeah, of course. Because you were no, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying I didn't have, and I'm, I'm not saying I didn't have my own uh, story yes. and hangups and, and, and deals. <laughs> that I wasn't saying I only did no, no. stuff because of you, and you did it so far vast in comparison to me. What I, what, what I was going You're for. You're not on trial, buddy. <laughs> if you if you'll have her read back the minutes, you'll see I did not prove myself. <laughs> Where's our stenographer? What's her name? Karen. Karen. <laughs> Dude, you don't want a Karen right now. For some reason, that's turned into like a socially horrible name. And I feel bad Wait, for anybody named Karen before? the other day. Wait, you didn't know this? Jackie. No, I, Jackie, yeah, I, I, you told me. I told you. Yeah, Karen yeah. is seen as a bitch. Pretty like much. an overprivileged so, white lady. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, Karen. When did this happen? You like, talked gum in my like grass. Months? Oh, you don't know Karen. <laughs> no. Oh. Man. <laughs> Dad knows Karen. He knows that, oh. but he doesn't understand how to use Zoom. <laughs> yeah, it's correct. Gosh. Okay. Dad's hip with all the memes. Except for Zoom. No, it's not for except for Zoom. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Tim, did you actually correctly identify the plant Jackie's using as her like image? Yeah. Wait, what is it? It's a dragon tail plant. Look at <laughs> it. Like You're it. so it's boring. Like you're so you boring, dude. You can't just say that to your brother and not expect it back. Dude, I, I was I was talking to a buddy and I was like, uh, "Oh, I, I gotta go. I'm going to the ornithology uh, club meeting." And he was oh like, gosh. "Bet you get mad pussy there." <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I am a buddy, so that makes sense. <laughs> ornithology is the study of birds, so I was going to yeah, a bird watcher meeting. Tim teaches bird watching now, and I'm hey, like, you're so boring. Do they what? have an app like Shazam for bird sounds? Yes, they do. <laughs> no, they don't. Yes, they do. Oh my God. Is that how Jim Gaffigan Merlin. was able to pull that off? Look at Merlin. Mer Shut up. There's an app called Merlin. Yeah. Merlin Bird ID. Oh my God. There's also Plant Snap, which is... Oh, uh, pictures of plants? Yeah, you take a picture of a plant, it'll tell you what it is. Oh no. I don't. You can't. I don't want to live on this planet anymore, as well, Professor Farnsworth well, would say. J Jackie, before I sound uh, too boring for words, hear me out. Okay. <laughs> Most nice. I, I I lived in Arizona. Okay. Like like a desert for okay. most of my life. Then I moved okay. to this island. It's a subtropical like paradise, if you will. It's paradise. filled with. It's it's insanely beautiful. It's got plants and animals and scenes that only exist in this area. This island is called the Galapagos of the of, of Asia. Um, okay. And so it's just, you know, as going back to dad's point, you know, I just love learning and it's just like, oh my goodness, this is a different world. And so I've spent the past three years studying it. Um, I've, I've compiled information that will hopefully, hopefully be published as a book later in this year. And um, yeah, I've made it my my job to know the island. That's awesome. And you're very ambitious. You? Like, I like that. But Everybody's plant. got a motor. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently his are plants. <laughs> his are plants and birds, yeah, mostly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, and teaching English to the island. Well, part of, well, like, that's what I said. I teach English to the island, and if I can't correctly say the name of the plants in English, how can I explain to the islanders what it is, or a tourist what it is? Why would... Uh, okay. I guess I'll have to take one of your tours. Yeah, that would be fun. M money up front. What? Watch right, out for the okay. habu. <laughs> yeah, watch out, watch out for the deadly poisonous snakes that are everywhere and are three times the population <laughs> of the people. Oh, wow. Luckily, uh, I'm not afraid of snakes. 
I am of spiders. Are there spiders? Oh, I'm afraid of crickets. But never, never mind. <laughs> never mind. I don't want to know. There are no spiders on this island. It's spider free. It's cricket free. No, the island's the island's no. covered with like sticks that you get to beat the snakes with. <laughs> but those okay. sticks are covered in spiders. So if you ever see no, a snake, you gotta that, overcome your fear of spiders to get the Use the snake to beat off the spider to grab the stick to beat the snake. <laughs> <laughs> I actually memorized that whole book by the way. Wait, which one? The thing, the oh, the old the woman? Thing, yeah. The spider, the spider, the swallow, the spider, the cat, the spider. Oh, you're saying it wrong like but 10 yes. times a week. <laughs> I think Dad just said cigarette every time he goes, Yeah, it's all the cigarette, it gets the cigarette, it's something the cigarette, it's something the cigarette. I think it's that move. I don't know why. Bricks, and so you just kind of like brush over her. Perhaps she'll die. Exactly. <laughs> no, I Dad I, wants a I, cigarette. <laughs> when I was learning English or trying to pronounce English properly, I had a speech impediment. So I took reading and English classes when I came here to Texas. And my teacher was Chinese spoke only Chinese really and barely any English and she was the one that taught me that book so I memorized it because there isn't much that oh, no. she said in English but I don't understand why she was my English teacher honestly like at all dude Tim, <laughs> Tim you remember the fucking Chinese guys at the school in, in Japan that, that spoke with Scottish accents Chinese and Irish guys, accents the thickest Irish accent <laughs> you've ever heard in your life it's like no the Scottish one too remember him <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm like, whoa! <laughs> Didn't expect that out of you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know it's racist in China. <laughs> like, dude, are you sure you're from China? <laughs> That's very off-putting, actually. I, it is. Did you, I know. Did you know that you're eight minutes away from my uh, left-handed blue-eyed daughter in uh, Plano, well, Texas? That actually told me when I sent him my invitation for my daughter's birthday, and I eight thought that minutes? was crazy. Yeah, eight minutes. Yeah, she lives. Eight minutes away. She lives under two miles from Sarah. <laughs> so you live in Plano. I do yeah. live in Plano. Wow. <laughs> you made that. You made the sound like you're very disappointed in my choice. Jim, we're gonna have to cut that. <laughs> yeah, Plano. Um, what What I was trying to establish with that question was literally the same city. It wasn't like yeah. Ugh, yeah. Plano. It was like okay, so. Well, because you could live eight minutes away from somebody and still technically be in a different, like, district or... Not here in Texas. Texas is, like, Plano is a huge city, and then Frisco is small, the colony is small, Carrollton is small, but they all touch each other. Or I got that a little wrong. But either way... Just like a good family. But, but the point was, in the same city. <laughs> yes. What I was trying to convey may have come off condescending. <laughs> no, Plano's an affluent city. He didn't mean it con condescendingly. I've never been to Plano. I have no opinion. <laughs> oh, it's an affluent city. It's like uh, I, like I the islands, but as a city. <laughs> I know, we are. Too. That's why you said they all touch each other, and I said, just like a close family. Gross. No. Now I know how family gatherings are like for you guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, getting blown out of the clouds soon. Okay. Oh. Hands off, dance off. <laughs> no. uh, yeah. Speaking of which, when's our next one, guys? Uh, <laughs> when, when is this meeting over? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> as soon as Jackie's fed up with you two, or the three of us. I'm assuming yeah, you know, I don't just simply be like when she's fed up with the two of you. <laughs> You're not a part of this. Yeah, right. <laughs> I feel like your dad is ready to go to sleep. It is past yeah, his bedtime. He, he's too no, old. He's, oh, hey, no, hey. Do I sound sleepy? No. I was making a joke I, about you being too be, No, he knows. Don't, don't get us wrong. <laughs> he, honestly, I've never heard him last an entire hour on a call. So this Why? is, this must be enthralling for him. <laughs> he's, a, he's a sleepy guy. <laughs> he's a nappy guy. Okay. And I don't mean nappy like that way. I mean he takes naps. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's it's gotten worse. I mean, it used to be, it used to be. You know, I mean, I I would go. Well, of course, I did a lot of cocaine, but uh, <laughs> I would go for days. Does it count then? And then crash. You know. Yes. And and even when I, you know, when I wasn't doing drugs, I still had the really involved in work, 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 and then crash. And I could take, you know, I remember the courthouse was three miles down the road from where we were living. 
So, you know, I would be in court and I would come home for lunch and I could take a 20 minute nap and then get up and just go. And, you know, and then be up till three, four in the morning and then get back up again around six or seven and go. That sounds interesting. Because I used to be on a three hour sleep schedule and then after having the baby, three. it's, yeah, I would sleep three hours and then I would work throughout the night and the day and then sleep again for Wait, three hours. Only three hours every day. Yeah, I don't know why. It was a really bad habit. Or just no. three, three hours? Mm. So I think way too much. Like, um, not only do I have ADHD, but I'm thinking constantly, and I can't shut my brain off properly. So I, It's called being I a woman. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, well, bad joke. You know, it's, many people can't shut their brain off. It, it is going constantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's kind of the thing about... Uh, meditation uh well, is to and try and shut those thoughts off well okay because hang on because uh dad i know i mentioned this to you and maybe uh matt or jack maybe you've seen this but online they have this thing going where they 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 swear by scientific evidence that there are people who don't think like i think i might be in there that that's my head. husband <laughs> <laughs> no that sounds horrible but i'm being serious there are people no, like, out there it's, it's not like they're it's it's not stupid. like a knock on their intelligence, but you know how you have that, like that running inner monologue. Yeah, there, yes. There is like a huge part of the population that just doesn't have it, uh, according to some random article that's gained a lot of popularity on the internet. So I could be totally off. So I'm not gonna, you know, uh, you know. Oh, don't worry about that. Everything Nobody's down on it, but th this there's this idea that there are people there that just it, it's and the only way I can explain it is I remember I was explain you know I was asking. Somebody, you know, well, how do babies know they're hungry if they can't have the thought, I'm hungry? And it's like, well, it's just instinctual. They're just going through, you know, it's just like a feeling, even though they can't explain mm -hmm. it. And some people just grow up, I guess, and that never develops, is the idea. And so they live, and they can still speak, but they just, that thought process of using words in their head never comes to fruition. <laughs> so, Tim, do you think in pictures or do you think in monologue? And it's... And if you think in monologue, is it yourself talking or someone Tim. else? Tim, <laughs> yeah, that's, I, need, that's, that's, I need you to answer that first, but I need to ask you a question, follow up. Go for it. Let me start by asking this. Have you ever read anything by Michael Singer? No. All right. Um, yes. Audible. I didn't, I listened to it. <laughs> okay. I will after this. Tim would love Midnight Gospel, by the way, if he's not already on it. It's, um... You know, if you look at one finger, it's compiled of a bunch of atoms that aren't really touching, but are touch. You, you know what I mean? It's kind of like that thing. Yeah. So, in in a sense, I believe you have your physical body, your mental self, and then your spiritual awareness in those okay. three. Right. So, uh, when okay. you're observing or viewing yourself in your mental monologue, that's your spiritual self viewing your mental thought uh, thought process. Mm -hmm. is, is how I've come to understand it. Okay. Does that answer the question? Almost. But here's the, here's that, the question you, I, yeah. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> but what do you, that you do? What, what, <laughs> say that again. <laughs> is that you? What you just said, is that you viewing yourself? Is that how you view yourself? Uh, I Tim, is your inner monologue, are you watching it or listening to it? <laughs> I'm watching it. You see your inner monologue, not hear it. I've never really thought of it. No, wait. I know. That's... <laughs> so it's kind of hard to... Because it's like, well, I, I, I'm I, seeing it, but it's not like I'm reading a resume or anything. It's like... When you're alone, I'm, alone. I'm, I'm more of a visual person. So if you were to ask me if I'm hearing it or seeing it, the the, the idea would be I'm seeing it. But I think the, the word seeing has a, a, a bit of a... Misnomer. Right. Okay. Thank you. So I tell you to think about Apple. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Right now I'm seeing an apple. Okay, that's Me what too. I wanted to know. Okay. I'm kind of tasting it, too. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, so then we're all... <laughs> we're I see the apple, at least. but I'm not tasting it. <laughs> it's an imaginary apple, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Pineapple, Bill. <laughs> it is? Oh, okay. So, uh, you started mentioning how, like, we're the viewer of our thoughts, right? And I, I completely believe in that. But when you're having an inner monologue or these thoughts happening, is it something 
that you listen to or take advice from and make your own decision? Um, all right, so this might sound a little foreign to people, but uh, I am of the idea that your thoughts are not your thoughts. Yeah, I am too. Um, the idea is it's just a bunch of uh, wavelengths and energy going through you and your job or your obligation is to pick up the ideas that serve you and go for them and to disregard those that go against your, your being. Okay, I feel that's like Tim would get I... along with, with Danny from yesterday. Yeah, I, t I do too. But that's where I differ. I don't believe that, I believe that we're a watcher of our thoughts, but I believe we have an entity inside of, inside of us that lived many lives that give us advice and then sure. I pick up other thoughts as well. So like all, my inner monologue is multiple people. Well, I mean, that doesn't need to be different from what I just said, because what I came back to was the idea that of these thoughts, you pick the ones that serve you and that idea of which ones serve you, which ones you want to go after and which ones you don't want to go after right. must be based in something. And if yeah. you want to opine <laughs> or think <laughs> Wait a book, Heb. that that the base comes from many existences where you've built up these ideas or these fundamental, you know, I, you know, character traits or whatever you want to call it, then okay. that's yeah. totally plausible to me. Well, the way I visualized it was different spirits or colorful things going into your mind and then you picking the colors and yeah. then letting go of the rest. How are you picking yours? That's not how I... It's like everyone comes to a table, they throw their colors on the table and they're like, here, these are the opinions of others. These are the opinions I think align with yours, but this is how they see it and this is how you but see it. But who picks? You? I guess. Well, but there's, there's a good part of being able to pick up and see another's perspective in order to understand them and understand what you could consider their truth. But I do it... Like, I do it all the time. Like, I understand other people's perspectives. I might not agree with them, but I'm like, hey, I agree with you because I see it, but this is what I believe. You yeah. Know? That's fair. Yeah. That's Tim. what I normally do. So there was a, a bit yesterday, <clears throat> not a bit, but like uh, part of the, uh, when we were talking to uh, Danny, the witch, <laughs> <Doctor. laughs> by the way, doctor, um, okay. that uh, Jackie was worried for a moment, like maybe that her thoughts were you know, being expressed a little loudly, like her inner monologue. Mm -hmm. And so I was just letting her know, like, Tim, do you, when you have, if you know you're completely alone, do you, do you vocalize your thoughts at all? You mean like talk like to you talk to yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Cool. I mean, it, it's, it's just something that happens. I, I think everybody has that. And no, they don't. No, asked. they don't. Sadly. So many people. <laughs> it's uh, Well, some people don't want to admit it, by the way. Don't, so don't forget to take that into account. That's when you're true. completely alone, I think most people vocalize the thoughts that are coming into their head. Uh, I'll take it a step further and say sometimes I accidentally say stuff when people are around. You know, it's, Oh, I do that all the time. <laughs> I mean, I've just learned that that's a part of the human condition, but I, yeah. I, I assumed that was universal. And if you tell me otherwise, it's no not. problem. I, <laughs> I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. <laughs> Dude, that's like my mantra. <laughs> what I would recommend is you work with children. Ask them questions obviously oh. dumb it down ask oh, them I how ask they them. think oh i asked them oh my goodness I, Dude, I I some stuff. would you give examples because i'd love to oh, hear yeah. one, one kid told me he came from another planet no really? yeah no and, way well, okay shut up uh you know i'm not gonna oh, I, re I remember you told me the story name any names but like he he's obsessed with space okay Ob obsessed with it. the kids he's now six and uh he's and one day he brought this book about space into it, uh, in, into the classroom. And just, mm -hmm. you know, like, it just like, like inspiration, whatever. It just dawned on me. I'm like, did you come from somewhere else? You know, and this kid's English is insane. So he's like, yeah. And I was like, really, where? And he opens up the book and he points like into this separate galaxy and he points at the planet in the, the other galaxy. He's like, I'm from here. Like, oh like no, like he, he wasn't phased. He wasn't confused. He's like, I understand your question. Here's the answer. Anyway, oh you want to do head, shoulders, knees, and toes? Because I love that. <laughs> so I, I'm pretty sure that creeped you out, and I see how. But like, wow, that's amazing. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, you know, the concept of people, like they go into this world being small and child mind, like they're honest to who they are. And then they leave the world being as honest as they were when they were a child. Like they regress mentally. Right. Um, Grace and progress. grandmother. They do? <laughs> yeah, that's usually what happens to There's the mind. Exception to the rule, Dad. <laughs> oh, I don't know about him. Um, <laughs> but uh, Grayson's grandmother, he's slowly leaving this current state of mind, and she talks about how she was born in the solar system, and that something, some type of wiring got mixed up, and that she was born in what? a mother that she knows is now as a mother. And she only laps into this mind or this thought of mind sometimes it's not often but she keeps telling me when i was pregnant with artemis she's like that baby is not from this world and she kept telling me yeah she she told me so many times while i was pregnant and like really scared me but now i'm not that scared well you can you can look into this because this was interesting and i decided to uh do some research and um you you can go on youtube there's like dozens of channels of people talking to kids who claim that they're not from here Really? Yeah. And there are some that'll tell you where they're from and how it is on that planet and, you know, no. like oh, avatar oh, type stuff. When uh, uh, Aaron Shenanigans. Uh, blue, blue people. When, when Aunt wow. Shenanigans was uh, like five and four years old, uh, you know, like before she attained what they call the age of reason. In other words, during the free years when Catholics can sit and get away with it. Uh, <laughs> she used to say, remember when I was a boy? Mm-hmm. And, oh, wow. And we would go, you know. No. 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 But, you know, now that I think about it, she was probably right. She was remembering when she was a boy. So you think when you're like below that age, which probably is like seven, eight-ish, you think you have memories from previous existences or life yeah. or time? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then they just brush it off as imagination, and then you get to a tone with your current uh, being. Do they brush it off, or do we? We do. We do. As adults, like say, James, oh, buy me coke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I will. Think you can buy me some coke. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, back to the question. I mean, I, I can, I remember uh, one time mom went to see like a psychic or somebody and she's, oh, and John I Edwards. told her that I was her dad reincarnated. And then I remember that dad, you told me that that had happened. And so then when mom went to like, ask me like, Hey, do you remember anything? I'm like, is this about you thinking that I'm your dad reincarnated? And then she was frustrated because she thought that I couldn't answer it properly anymore because dad put that block on me. Oh, that. Kind of makes I didn't sense. put a block on you. I'm not going to push that on you like you blocked me or anything. You know, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's like, maybe that was unfair. I didn't mean to say you blocked me, but she... No, no, no. You didn't say that. Mom did. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> but so then that would mean that we would get reincarnated in the same family line over and over again. Well, there are certain people mm. who have the same characters just The story a- of the egg. The story of yes. the egg. The goddamn egg. That egg. I can't wait to do that that podcast. Dude, that's fucking like not far from now. I know. Uh, Tim, have you it's ever just so many questions? No. Oh. Okay. Good You're gonna I, have I to can't watch. I've talked to you since then. Wait, you didn't tell him? How dare you? I told you I haven't talked to him since then. Probably. Me and Tim could go like a month or two, at, like at a time without talking. Yeah. I because know. normally we go like, "What's new? Nothing. What's new? Nothing." All right, back to life. Bye. And that's pretty much what goes on. But so once in a while, Tim, we'll sit down for like six hours. Yep. That's good. So, Tim, right. after this episode, you need to watch the video of the egg. And him and I are right actually going to interview or talk to someone that sent it to us originally that explains some of our beliefs. Angie, uh, my hero. So many questions. Like, if we believe that all these other worlds or planets have humans or beings, then that, that means... Mm. Either we have multiple gods, or we have one god that overviews all the solar systems, which doesn't make sense to me. It's too big. I know I sent it to Tim because I sent a Japanese version of it, mm-hmm. so he could have Sachiko play it. But that's okay. Well, you know, there, there is a, 
uh, school of thought, uh, I believe it's, you know, uh, East Indian in origin, that uh, there is a, you know, uh, a higher power, a God, a, you know, a single source. Um, and, uh, you know, that has all the qualities that the, the Catholics put on, on God. Uh, you know, all powerful, all knowing, everlasting, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, but he was born, you know, and so he just broke himself up into an infinite number of pieces and is playing hide and seek with himself, and that's oh, what shit. this world is. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. That's <laughs> awful. Right? Yeah, that, that, that's awful. That's a nightmare. Tell me about that. And Jack, you go back to. It sounds like we're punishing ourselves. <laughs> there couldn't be just one. I feel is a little. I, it, you could be correct, but I'm saying just to dismiss it because it's too big is quite. Um, not quite mm, correct. I mean, I, I don't mean to, to slight you, but in, in, in the same sense that, you know, uh, for example, if you say like, oh, I work a full-time job, I make this much money. Well, you know, goodness, what's his name? Bezos, you know, he's about to be a trillion dollar maker. To, so to say like, well, if you can only, there's only this capacity. To put it in other words, like, you know, to an ant, they, an ant can't see a human. So to say just because it's too big, I think you're just, you're too close to the elephant is the phrase. I, I don't know how you'll remember that, but the phrase is being too close to the elephant. So you can't see yeah. that. <clears throat> or as Jack would say, the well. elephant's too close to you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the elephant's footprint is in the cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they can't fit into the Honda Civic. That's why they cannot fit in the Honda Civic. <laughs> so so you, find, you find the idea of God playing hide and seek with himself is repulsive? or I, no, I, I find it gross. No, I don't find it gross. I find it scary. Yes. I find that as a horror movie, like, yes. or like it going really bad. Because even if you hide from yourself, it turns into something that's horrible or ter like, terrifying. I think you're interpreting the idea of hiding from yourself in a negative connotation. And I think I, what I that I am. Trying to do I am too. Well, I think he's saying when you're a kid, you play hide and seek. Were you terrified playing hide and seek? No, no, but listen, Wasn't that's that different. Fun? This is, it was that's fun. But, vain. <laughs> no, no, but remember, we played Islands Hide and Seek, right? Where we played through the, an entire gigantic, like, two-mile neighborhood? Yeah, I remember that. Okay. Now, could you imagine, like, why, why on earth would you hide yourself across a million years and a million galaxies? That feels like you don't want to put yourself back together. Yeah, and, like, you're trying to hide something. Yes. Because hide and seek Like, we're trying not to scary. get back together. And if it's all, if we're all one <laughs> and we're just hiding parts of ourselves from ourselves, that means there's parts of us we don't want to find. Or that That's we're scary. missing. No, well, right. Well, hey, going back to that point yet again, uh, Matt, do you love learning? Yes, very much. All right. So that's finding out something new. If you know yes. everything, according to you, I mean, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but if you knew everything that would ever be known forever and ever, then you would be okay with mortality because you know everything. Yep. There's nothing to know. There's nothing to do. You, you, you've done it all. That's, I don't know that I would be okay with it, but I would be more, more susceptible or accepting of it. Yeah. All right. So if you enjoy existence and want to continue, then wouldn't you? I would like more stuff to know. interesting to break yourself up and to do it again? No, because that would be trying to find memories I have instead of trying to learn something new. You know what I mean? In my mind. I, that's then, maybe my interpretation. If we're going to bring this back to the Bible or whatever religion. I don't think I ever mentioned the Bible, but go for well, it. Well, your dad did. Your dad did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your dad mentioned Catholicism. In the yeah, beginning, God created yeah. these beings because he was bored or whatever. Okay? He separated right. himself all these ways. But he also created Adam and Eve in the beginning. And they were set in paradise to be perfect. So and that woman ruined the, the whole option. fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, they were given well, the ladies, option. You need everything. <laughs> but you can't eat this, okay? <laughs> Wait. And they ate this. And they what, what was it that they couldn't eat? Now, they oh, couldn't well, eat the fruit, fruit. fruit. Knowledge of Wait, they yes. couldn't eat a knowledge of good and evil. They okay. couldn't eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's what makes us human. Without them doing that, we wouldn't be a being of, or hu a they, human being they, or a spirit of knowledge and evil. They, they didn't make, in other words, when God created Adam and Eve, as I read it, 
Of course, the yeah. Bible was written by a person, so we got to all yeah. take this with a grain of salt. But anyway. No, this yeah. is all grain of salt. None of us are religious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but, you know, they, they, did, they did make judgments. God created right. Adam and Eve judgment-free. That's you know, ironic. When human's original sin was to make judgments, to decide this is good, this is bad, because when he created them, there was no good and no bad. So he wanted to create perfect beings in the beginning. He wanted them to still be intact Not, and perfect. No, just they didn't know the difference between the two, so they just lived their lives like... like but wouldn't that maybe, create perfectness? Because you wouldn't know whether no. it was bad or good. I mean, in your own eyes, but well, would that mean that perfectness yeah, is subjective? Bad. Right. But two things on that... Uh, it, uh, the idea from the, the, the Bible is that we are of spirit. We are of this higher being. We are of God, but mm -hmm. still being grounded to this human self. Right. I have yeah, that was idea one. I had What's a point. the second idea? I was going to get around to it. Oh, so then the, uh, the second point was after the eating of the apple. And I'm paraphrasing. Uh, there's something yeah. in the Bible, you know, where uh, Adam and Eve, they started covering up. And uh, God was like, why are you covering up? And it's like, because I'm naked. It's like. Who, how, who told you you're naked? How do you understand the idea of naked? It's the same, same concept of, you know, uh, there's the two fish in the water, and then the older fish swims by and goes, uh, hey, boys, how's the water today? And the one fish turns to the other and goes, what the hell is water? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. That's great. It's Tim. really hard. To, <laughs> it's hard holding to out on me. What's up? You're holding out you're on You're holding me. out jokes on me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's it's hard to be aware of the situation that you're currently in. That's why an outside perspective is always, you know, better. I don't know what this had with the original thing, but those were both things from the Bible. Anyway. <laughs> so what would happen if we did that to children where we just left them, didn't give them opinions or just cared for them can, in a way that we impose our own beliefs well, what do you think i can send you, you guys the link on this but it depends on how you're, you're saying that because there there was a very rare case and you can find very little information about it for privacy reasons but there was like a two-year-old girl that was abducted and was kept like this is going to get dark so bear with me she was it's, kept, like, usually does in a basement for mm -hmm. like 20 something years before she was finally found and so it's like well if you leave somebody alone but granted you know like without nutrition and whatnot but uh, you know, she didn't really progress past that age, like right. even though she was like a, a grown female. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying to leave children alone, I mean, to what extent? Well, Here's as in like, you're, they're still learning, but not learning, oh, you're naked. Good and evil. Or, well, here, or you can can't I, do that. Can I venture oh, a guess uh, or a thought? Um, I was reading about a study or reading a study. Now it's about a study. Let's not lie. Um, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you put you put thirteen monkeys together in a and baby monkeys together, right? Um, once they've all grown out of adolescence, as long as there's at least twelve of them, once they start growing into adults, one of them becomes the de facto policeman of the group, right? One of them becomes the de facto leader, and one of them becomes a de facto like um, defender of the law and then another one defends the rest of the monkeys so like it kind of just happens itself like with or without any input or or leanings or or knowledge or education it just kind of happens once you have more than 12 people in a society um without any input on what's right and what's wrong they'll kind of decide for themselves and then appoint the correct people to do that does that help I, I don't know if you would, if the the correct people do that. I, I I I but but understanding that here's what I would say. I have two children in the house. To give them no guidance and no governess would be chaos. Uh, so basically, uh, simply put, I don't agree with the anarchy. Um, no, but not to jump to that. But what I'm saying is, it's like. Uh, guys, you know, I, I, I said, you know, being a father is interesting because I get to put together sentences I've never said before in my life. Like, uh, buddy, don't, buddy, don't buddy. stab the cat with the spatula. Like, yeah, buddy, <laughs> quit, quit hitting the cat with the spatula. <laughs> I haven't gotten to that point yet, but we'll see. So it's, Right now, it's don't hit people. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, then it'll, it'll, it'll progress, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so, you know, it's, I think what it is, is the spirit adjusting to this, I don't want to say realm, but I already had. Uh, just, yep, do it. And it's so fine. for that reason, you need to understand the laws of how to exist in this experience. Yes, there's a lot of BS rules that we need to get rid of. Um, yes. But I think we're working on it as a species. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. but, yeah. as we add more and more rules every day. <laughs> no, geez, do we ever. But, uh, well, if you look at America right now, it just looks like a horror scene out there. What, what's the movie Fury Road, maybe? Oh, dude, <laughs> yeah. Mad Max? It's the fucking Thunderdome. <laughs> that's, well, that's what it looks yeah. like from Japan. But putting that aside, yeah. um, it, you know, to just say, oh, like, and, uh, you know, my, my wife and I, we discussed this. It's like just she is of the, 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 the idea uh, of, you know, just do whatever you makes, whatever makes you happy and everything else will come through. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe her in that. I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I believe my wife. I, I don't completely agree with that idea uh, because if you had everybody everywhere doing whatever they wanted all the time, yeah. it would be chaos. Yeah. Would it? I mean, would it, yes. would it though? Yeah. Yes, because there are some people that are just out there to rape or kill. Right. And they will. And anyway, and, so if there was general lawlessness, they would brain continue. Was, yeah, that's how their brain is wired though. So, it's not so right. it's, well, so, and, and I, and I've said this and I, I hope this doesn't come off sounding strange. Um, it won't, but, but <laughs> here we go. Um, I've always been attracted to women older than me, but mm -hmm. I just, you know, I <laughs> kiss the ground every day that I'm, you know, I, I'm so happy. I'm not attracted to women that are so much younger than me because that could have been the situation. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, it's like saying, well, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gay or, or whatever. It's like the same thing. It's like, I'm sorry, I only find people of this age area attractive. I mean, you can debate that a little bit, but basically, like, your, your preferences are your preferences, and it's just, what was the point here? Anyway. Yeah. Um, here's something I've always wanted to say. Lawlessness. <laughs> uh, here's something I've always wanted to say. Oh, all right. Uh, so we'll I, I slipped the sheet, the sheet I slipped, and on the sheet, I slipped the sheet. <laughs> all right, very good. <laughs> I believe it was Louis C.K. But basically, <laughs> and to use him as a role model for this, um, <laughs> you know, he was saying, you know, people don't murder, but and there's a law against murder, and if it wasn't for the law against murder, there'd be a lot of murder. Yeah. Well, it's like. I'm really interested in murder and murder cases. So there are cases out there that men who are attracted to younger women, they want to kill themselves because they don't want to be attracted to them, but they keep going to this predatory. And it sounds horrible, but this happens. It's a mental state that they can't fix. So that's why I was telling everyone, right, do like, whatever you want. Like, I, I it's not, no sense not that it can't be fixed. convicted sex offenders. However, it's, it's unfair to look at one group of people and be like, well, that's just how they are, and look at another and be like, well, they're no, yeah. God. Like, it's, 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 it's unfair, and I, yeah. It should all be, it's all fixable. The problem is there's a stigma to certain ones that people aren't, aren't willing to uh, give them the time of day to get fixed, especially pedophiles. Um, yeah. Well, there, there's, yeah. I, I actually had to do some research for a, a, an interpreting gig where it was about um, the, the sale of basically you know child sex dolls and uh what know, yeah jesus uh, dude you can go on amazon they they have them at least amazon no. Man has them yeah Ooh. what no it was, it was an expose uh, uh against amazon for having these readily available in japan and uh but anyway in that you know i I had to watch horrible videos but you know of them oh, there was gosh. a bunch of just like genuinely acceptable you know human beings who are, who are saying like i hate this about myself but like that's, that's it's better than using a real child obviously yeah. yeah he's like he's like it's kind of you know like this is the only way i can get my urges out without hurting anybody that's kind of scary and great and terrible at the same time yeah i had a client that took uh a, a what a my size barbie i think that's what it was called oh god and you know, modified it so that he could have sex with it. Oh God! 
<laughs> this is getting but dark. <laughs> that's like my biggest fear, especially since I have a daughter. And I know that's a fear for dads too that have boys, but that idea that there are people out there that want to hurt her and then try to explain to her that she shouldn't be afraid of people at the same time. Yeah. Be like, Hey, they can hurt you. They can rape you. And me coming as like, I, I don't want to say a survivor cause I'm not a victim, but I've been raped before and no one believed me. Uh, my mom didn't believe me for sure, but I was scared of men for the longest time. And I don't want, I'm that still to scared of men. Well, you are a man. <laughs> Hopefully. Am I? Well, that's I don't good. know anymore. <laughs> that's okay. I'm a Mary, little boy. Of women. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. You're so much smarter. <laughs> well, so outside of that, Tim, I, yeah. I know how your dad kind of raised you from what he's told me. How do you raise your children? Like, I, He's a disciplinarian. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not. I, I don't do it the same way my dad does. I wish I could be a little more patient with them. I would say, and this could be, I don't want it to come off as an excuse. I would say, you know, for him, it was a second family and he was in his 40s, so he may have had more patience. <laughs> I yeah. prefer- or laziness. <laughs> well, I prefer to call it economy of means. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, I, you know, I had my first child at 23. I mean, you're, so I think we're kind of close to the same uh, deal in terms of when you have your children. Um mm-hmm. So, how I raise my children. All right. A um, couple things. Uh, we homeschool. That's one. Okay. Um, and within that homeschooling, uh, I, I don't want to create a stigma by saying unschooling, but it's not a strict, you have to do this from this and this and this and this. It's mm-hmm. in the morning, we work on reading, writing, arithmetic, and then in the afternoon, it's what do you want to pursue? What do you want to be? What do you want to learn about? Okay. That's awesome. That's nice. That's, yeah. That's amazing. I would love to have gone through that. <laughs> so, um, you know, I keep going back to this picture. Uh, I, I, you, you know how you love when people explain memes to you in, in words? Yes. Jackie um, does it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it shows the school system, and it's like, all right, we want to make sure everybody's doing the same. So everybody climbed the tree, and then it pans over to a, a group of animals, and there's like a monkey, a fish, an elephant. And it's like, that's kind of how I view modern education. I agree. Traditional education. It's like, yeah, you know, there's so many people now that you can just look at and see that uh, Gary V or any of those, you know, wildly successful entrepreneurs who are doing great for themselves, they, they, school was horrible for them. Not to get too much off the subject, but that, that, that's one. The one thing is with education, it's learn the basics and then pursue your passions. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of, of discipline, I guess it's kind of the standard, you know. Well, I, I guess I kind of go with the whole, you know, do, do, do the work and then you get the reward. Like, you know, finish up, you know, the tasks for the day before you get to play Minecraft or whatever. Or have a beer. <laughs> right. Well, I hope you're not playing Minecraft and drinking. That would be a very damaged adult or a very unfortunate child. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I mean, that's that's how I do it. It's it's you know, I I go out and you know, I I finish working, get it done, and then I come back and let loose. I have some beers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's, that's fair. No, that makes sense. Um, did that I just answer the question. So sorry to, to no, it did. It answered the question. I was just curious on your patience. You said you wish you had more patience. More patience for what? Um, how many times have you seen Dad mad, Tim? Three. I've seen him twice. Nice. Because well, you weren't at that soccer tournament. Right. <laughs> for what? Dad doesn't get mad. At there all. was a soccer tournament where basically a referee screwed me and my team out of a championship, and Dad lost it. Um, because the referee was correct and that, that's all it was, but it was, it was unique to see dad get that upset because I had only seen it once before. That's interesting. Yeah. No, we have a cousin. I, I remember, uh, there, there was a cousin we had and we were like, all right, what do you want for your birthday? And she's like, for my birthday, I would like to see your father get angry because I've never seen that in my entire life. <laughs> that's funny. You won't. It's, he's done now. I mean. It would take a lot. No, in that sense, like, I see this guy with close to perfect patience, and I can, 
I mean, just while we were taping, you know, I was like, okay, boys, like you finished your work. It was a little light today, but that's because I need to not be uh, bothered while I'm doing this. So please let me uh, record and you guys can go ahead and do your games and whatnot. Um, and even though I did that, they came in like three times. So on the third time, like I, I was like, come on, guys. And it wasn't even this calm, but <laughs> I was like, come on, guys. I thought we had a deal. Like you guys could, like, I'm not even asking you to do like work or that you have to get this done. I'm saying you, this is free time for you guys. Just mm -hmm. please don't bother me. I'm doing something right now. And Did you, you ever ask them why? Well, oh no. The, the, the reasons are completely obvious. It's, it's, they're having technical difficulties, getting the computer going, getting the game going. Or the video game system. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And so it's like, I can't get it going. It's like, but like, so, so do something else, guys. I said, I can't be bothered. Please do something else. Right. And, right. but, and, and it's like a self-feeding system though, because then I get into this pattern where it's like, well, if I just get the, the, the system or the game going, then they can, they'll glue themselves to it, which sounds like horrible parenting, but let me just. <laughs> it's not. It's one hour a week. <laughs> well, even if it was more, it's not. I believe that like, whatever works best for your child um well here's uh, let, let me finish saying that and then let me move on to the other point but yeah. um it, it's like if i can just get them set up to do what they want to do then they they give me my space okay. and if they can't get that done then they come into my space now i understand i'm not making it better by always stopping what i'm doing to go and fix it so that it's better, because then they're just learning that if something's wrong, they can just bug me until I fix it. I right. Well, why is that wrong? Because you're, he's not going to be there their whole life, and if he instills in them at this young age that he, they can always go to dad for the answer to every one of their problems. Self-learned helplessness. <laughs> yeah, they be I, like daddy. That's or, not true, dad. because <laughs> not well, when they actually have an issue, they'll go to him then. Yes, real issues. But right now, but, these aren't real issues, right? But sh I think that you should still be there, even for the small things, because now, as an adult, I don't go for my dad for almost anything. I go to my dad for everything. <laughs> I don't. Like, y'all's relationship is amazing. Like, I, I'm not used to it. Like, Grayson's parents are still married. That was a foreign thing to me already. And then like, I meet people like you guys, where y'all communicate almost daily, and y'all yeah. have this relationship, which... My dad lives five minutes from me, and I barely talk to him, like, ever. Wow. Well, yeah. I get that, though, coming from, yeah. Well, so... It's unfortunate, though. Not, not to detract from what you just said and uh, everything, but to just finish you, up... You can interview her, too, Tim. <laughs> to, to summarize, and sure, I'll throw something back at you, but uh, the thing with the patients is that it's not that I won't help them, but... And this is, you know, part of my selfishness, I guess you could say, but it's like, I'm working on, you know, making sure the books are correct for the business so that we can have a wonderful life together. You want to know how to make a turtle helmet in Minecraft, which is... <laughs> <laughs> Why not five minutes for both? Well, and so I, I'm using that time as a construct, but five right. minutes for both. Well, so, so I, I do implement things like that. Like, I, like, you know, even if I'm tired at the end of the day, because... Most of my lessons are like later at night. So I get home and, you know, the kids say, you know, dad, let's, you know, do this or that, you know, no examples. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hide and seek, hide and seek. The hide and seek, they like Tickle Monster. They like uh, Super Smash Brothers occasionally. They want to play Minecraft. I'll say, okay, boys, you know, 10 minutes undivided, no phone attention. And then you got to give me some time to unwind. And maybe 10 minutes is not enough. Uh, mm -hmm. but I give them 10 minutes, of course, like 10 minutes of daddy playtime every day, of mm -hmm. course. Um, so having said that, it's since I'm home most of the, the, the day and they're home most of the day, it's, you know, like out of sight, out of mind, right? Mm -hmm. But if they're inside, it's in mind. It's like, if they have the slightest thing, they'll come to me. And, and I love that. But at the same time, you know. Daddy, 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 like that, that stuff, it, it wears down on me. And the, at a certain point I lose my patience. Yeah, I get it. Can I make a comment? Yes. Thank you. I found it interesting that Kim uh, 
uh, talked about in the morning, they, they do the basics. And when I was a kid, it was called the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Now, you know what I said? <laughs> yeah. And, and it was called the three R's. And actually, two of them are not R's. Yeah, I, that's what I was just about to ask. <laughs> I thought arithmetic was an A. Yeah, and writing is a W. Um, right? And reading is and a it, L. I didn't catch that one. It's, it's only reading that's the R. But it, that, those were the basics, the three R's. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. It's even in the song School Days. School Days, School Days, Dear Woke Rule Days, Reading and Writing and Arithmetic. Uh, talk to the tune of the hickory stick, because that's when, you know, uh, nuns used to beat kids. Uh, what? But anyway, that's my comment. Uh, I'll go back into the zone now. You guys, <laughs> you guys can continue. But, uh, I like your commentary, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. All right. One, one last thing um, on that is, you know, they, they do watch a lot of, um, they do watch a lot of content. Um, having said that, it just because, and, and I struggle with this myself because sometimes I'm like, I feel like they're watching way too much TV, but it's not TV. It, it's not like they're watching, you know, like uh, Toe Jam and Earl. No, that's a video game. What, what's the one? <laughs> Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> yeah, I like Phineas and Ferb. It's not like they're watching that stuff. They're watching uh, Cat Dog. Well, here's the thing. Just them watching these videos about different things, they're still learning. They're learning new vocabulary. They, they say words that I've never said. It blows my mind. <laughs> Uh, Adrian said, uh, you know, I want to get my computer up and running so I can make my bedrock house. What the fuck? It's talking about Minecraft. But I don't think I knew bedrock until eight. (laughs) Well, I mean, that's where the Flintstones are from. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, that's, you know, then don't, like, you know, know, he's talking about respawning and he learns his language through, you know, Pokemon and, and things like that. So to worry about that is certainly something I do, but I'm, I'm trying to unlearn that behavior. You know what's funny is kids, or kids, but people in games call it responding, and then we're just starting to figure out, like, oh, it's reincarnating. It's the same. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> it is? Yeah. Oh. Re- respawn is when you the, the game lets you live another life after you die. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I knew what responding was, but oh, okay, I didn't good. really realize or correlate reincarnation to it. I, how, I mean... If you think about it, they're similar. They're different. That's true. <laughs> Unless you count life as a game. <laughs> I don't think anyone should ever feel, or as a parent, should feel guilty about their children watching videos. It's Nowadays, the world is changing. Why stop them? You're only going to stunt their growth in some way or form. And That's how everyone else is doing it. Yeah. All right. So to uh, be on the interviewer end, uh, I mean, obviously, you're already in the middle of it, but... You know, what are your plans on parenting? Like, how, how do you view how you think it's going to go as she uh, ages and progresses? And then how would you handle any uh, disagreement between you and your husband about how the child should be raised? So we actually spoke about how we wanted to raise her before we had her. Um, just because I had... We lived with his parents while I was sick for a couple months. Um, It it was closer to the hospital, and I was pregnant, and I had a lot of issues. And I started watching the way his parents parent him and some of the characteristics he has. Mm -hmm. I don't like all of them, obviously. You're not going to marry someone that's perfect. Um, So I was like, hey, these are things that make me uncomfortable. Um, I I don't want her to be spoiled in the form of materialistic things. Um, I also believe in a very open communication. Hey, like even now, as she's growing up, as she's about to be a year, she's get, starting to get frustrated with not being able to communicate. So what I do is like, hey, Artemis, you're feeling frustrated because you want something and I don't understand you, but I'll figure it out. So like my ways of communicating with her is very clear as much as I can be. And I think her, I will watch do, her. Do, do you speak, like, like literally that, that example you just gave, is yeah. that how you speak to her? Yeah. Like I mean, I'm not saying, like, it sounds offensive, but I just, like, I go way out of my way to 
speak to them like adults. Like I don't use baby words and things like that. Yeah. I've, been, I've been complimented and reprimanded for it at the same time. So I just wanted to double check. Anyway. Yeah, no, like she wants chocolate chips. I started giving her dark chocolate chip because I have them on the counter and anything I eat, I think she should be able to try or eat it. So I would eat chocolate chips and now she started getting frustrated because she wanted more. So I was like, okay, Artemis, I understand you're frustrated. I'll give you one, but we're not going to eat more than we need to. So I gave her a new one and it seemed to like calm her down just by me explaining to her, but I don't know because she doesn't communicate back. So mm. I feel like it helps and it helps her through her tantrums sometimes. Like uh, I started teaching her like breathing. She doesn't know how to blow in and out yet, but I do it for her mm -hmm. and she'll like calm down that way. Or I don't know. I just try to communicate as best as I can because it's not fair. She doesn't have the words to tell me, you know? Mm. Yeah. Well, I tried to communicate with the kids as adults always. Yeah, I picked that up from you. You know? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and, and, and I remember, uh, you know, your mother saying, I, I, I can't believe you do that. And I go, well, why not? Well, you know, like the way Danny is now, he's, he's helpless because she used to do things for her kids. You know, she used to treat them as kids beyond when they were actually kids, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's damaging <laughs> in some ways. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. I, I, I blame I'm, my mom. My mom was just fucking great. She had, she had uh, patience. She had the most patience of anyone I've ever known, except for maybe Matt. Who me? Yes, me. Couldn't be. Then who? You. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, and I learned that from her. Uh, well, my dad died when I was six, so you know, wow. I was really close with my mom. And, uh, awesome. and and she was great. So there you go. For me, it's I'm avoiding being my parents. My parents did not communicate well. They had a very toxic marriage and relationship that bled into our upbringings. So yeah. I don't want that for sure that's, for Artemis. That's fair. She doesn't deserve it. No, no one does. But... You know, stuff happens. Yeah, it's true. But I don't. I haven't even told my family that I do this. It's only my husband knows, and that's it. <laughs> I, I'm afraid of what my sisters will think. I know what my mother. My mother would sue us. I already know she would <laughs> attempt to sue us, and my dad would think I'm crazy. On what basis? That, that, that's on what? Like, how None. Much, she no she will never have a basis of why she wants to sue me. Or she's but she's always was she so happy. She's a angry and toxic person, so she will do anything to stop someone from doing something they enjoy. Mm. But I don't know if she realizes she does this, so that's why I'm like most eh. people who. What's the phrase? You know, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah, I I love that one. But if the hurt is done to yourself by yourself. That only has such a stance. Well, that's not a hurt, though, if you do it to yourself, though, right? That's not true, because it hurt. being hurt is being hurt. It's, the definition means the same, but... No, I know, but if somebody hits you, that hurts. That's not you hurting yourself. But she hurts herself with drugs, mentality, ah, things yes. that she does to herself, and right. situations she places herself in. It's but just you don't hurting think... herself, and she hurts others. Right, but do you... Are you sure that that didn't stem from, like, being hurt as a young infant or child? She did have some trauma, and I knew, knew of some of it, um, but she did it twice uh, as bad as she did because she believes that someone else deserves it worse than she did. Well, not to make light of the situation, but pay it forward, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's exactly what she believes, uh, she believes, I guess. I was talking to John today and John was like, you know, what would be really helpful on the show is if you guys had like a color chart of like throughout the show, like at the timestamps where it showed like uh, red would mean you guys get serious and blue or like green means you guys got like light hearted about it. And you guys should just see what your chart looks like through like an hour of you two talking because it goes from like, like talking about like the seriousness of rape and abuse to like joking about rape and abuse in like a minute. And I'm like, oh shit, maybe we should <laughs> take a look at this color chart. 
Anyway, sorry. I like that idea though. I would like to get that colored for a couple things, <laughs> a couple episodes. Anyway, but yes, um, I, I do agree that hurt people tend to hurt people, but generally not, not double up on it or double down on it, you know? But now that, so Tim is a parent, I wonder if he feels like parts of his day or something that he's doing might cause trauma to his children. Oh yeah. And not know it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> totally like in my head it's it's like eh, you know i'm definitely messing them up i, I do my best to uh, address it like if i did something crazy or if i feel like something's going on that needs to mm -hmm. be just I'll, I'll address it in the moment and i continue to tell them like listen i'm i'm a human just like you are and i make mistakes That's awesome. don't take them personally is you know and you know if you know, I, I do my best to address the fact that I know I'm messing them up as I'm raising them, but that's scary to think well, about. Well, you know, just all right. Like, there for are, example, people will be like, "Well, you don't get a manual with the baby." Having said, no. there's a long line of books on how to raise <laughs> a baby. <laughs> so, the one thing I would have done differently, uh, well, although I don't really care for that line of thinking, um, you know, it doesn't hurt to read a few books about having a baby if you're having a baby. Um, mm -hmm. I was like, well, there's no manual, and then I just kind of fumbled my way through the first years. Um, so, yes, I, I definitely know that I'm going to impart some of my uh, insecurities and faults and flaws and, you know, uh, project incorrect things onto them, but at the same time, I'm trying to uh, proactively. So you're not teaching them how to shush people. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> no, he has something far more clever in mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, my friend you know, Matt. Oh, sorry, Tim, go for it. No. My, my idea is, you know, to try and teach them character. Yeah. And while I'm doing yeah. that, I'm, I I'm acknowledging <laughs> and letting them know that there are still flaws in mine. Nice. That's good. It's a great way to put it. Well, what's frustrating right now is I, I talked about my mom or my stepmom and my dad, and they live right. five minutes from me. But I have a nine year old sister and a four year old sister. With and I'm mom. watching them with my stepmom and my dad, but I'm oh, watching okay. them be raised to the similar to how I was raised. And I'm watching characteristics come out of them that aren't healthy. Like, mm -hmm. uh, my dad is a great dad, better than he was when I was younger, but he's not at home most of the time. He works outside almost all day from, like, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. sometimes, if he could. Doesn't give him the attention he wants, and he has low patience. Like, his patience is barely none. That made no sense. He barely has any patience. <laughs> yeah. a, a long fuse on the rocket to the moon. The, the tree is a part from the fall of apples. So. Yeah. We get it. Oh, thank you, guys. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening this far. And I didn't think you'd make it. We appreciate it very much. Just if you could do us a favor and go find us anywhere and follow us, rate, subscribe. We'll be under the tree meditating. Just yes. Go find us. I will have a rainbow coming out of my head. I, that, I was hoping possible? you would say ass. I will have a rainbow coming out of my ass. Like a unicorn. Yeah, like, wait, what? <laughs> We're at Twitter, uh, Magic for Humans, TikTok, Spotify, uh, YouTube. The link th is through the website on that one which is magicforhumans.com as well oh we have a second instagram which is magic for humans the number four and then with an s like comment on all our pictures videos and download and give us stars on the itunes please the itunes yes especially the itunes <laughs> but anywhere you get your podcasts or pod carts rate subscribe and comment, please. We will read the positive comments on air. <laughs> Ooh, that's nice. We'll read the negative ones, too, because it'll be fun. Don't leave negative ones, though. If anyone leaves us a one-star rating, I will go and murder you in your sleep, in your dreams, and then you'll wake up and be murdered again every time you go to bed. 
you'll be living the same day over and over. It's like but you're not sure if you're awake or asleep. It's deja vu. <laughs> and please feel free to go to the website and send in any art. Music is great. Drawings are great. And Jokes are great. That you find that inspire you from our podcast, we will gladly look at it, post it, or even promote you as well. So thank you very much for any artwork that's sent in. Yes, thank you very much. Go to the website, check out our uh, gallery there where we're going to have, you know, featured artists and featured selected art also on the website. Uh, we do have Venmo and PayPal if you want to support us to get this, I guess, Dollar project goes off the a ground. Long way. Yes. It really does. Our editor isn't cheap and I talk a lot. <laughs> Help. Help. Back to the show. I think well, I need to you finish my thought. So remind me to yeah. finish my thought before we start. Do that. No, go right now. Finish your thought. Oh, okay. So my thought is, is I'm watching my sisters create like these horrible memories and traumatizing events in their lives that are changing their personality. And it's like messing me up because I know that they're traumatized in some way. And I don't want to use like traumatized, but like they are not going to have healthy relationships in the future because of what my dad is doing. That's not good. Well, yeah. I, I wouldn't jump to the assumption that because of that, that that's going to happen. There's, a, there's an old, you know, story about, you know, these twins that grew up with uh, an abusive alcoholic father. And then mm -hmm. the one, you know, turned out exactly like him. And they, the other one, you know, became a very successful businessman, blah, 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 you know, father of the year, that kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, they asked the, um, the one son, you know, well, why did you think that your life turned out the way it did? And he said, well, because I watched my father. And then they asked the other kid, adult at the time, you know, well, how did your life turn out the way that that happened? And he said, well, because I watched my father. So uh, while it can be a terrible, toxic environment, I think your mindset and what you take away from it is more important than the event itself. But I'm watching her take the parts away from it that she shouldn't. And I don't know how to stop it. Like, she constantly needs attention. So she obviously outbursts to get attention uh, or she does things that she's not supposed to, to get attention. And then she breaks do do down like and that. cries. And mm -hmm. then she starts the cycle all over just to get attention. And it's this horrible cycle. And I went through that same cycle, but I grew out of it because I noticed it wasn't healthy and it wasn't good. And, and you're, you're just worried that she might not learn that herself you yeah. or without you intervention. It, right? I'm sorry. So you were able to grow out of this only because I recognize it. Right. So but if I never had that one thought, like in the middle of high school, being like, hey, this is not a good cycle to be in. Something bad is going to happen to me if I continue this cycle. I know exactly what you're talking about. That's why I like, like him. Anyway, <laughs> that's why I followed yeah. him. So he couldn't get like, away from me. <laughs> it was like a random thought that I had one day. And I was like, oh, maybe I need to change course and like figure out how to feel better or get better. So I'm not stuck in a relationship with a guy like my dad. Right. And, and, and that's totally valid, and I'm not trying to um, tell you that it's wrong for you to, to worry because that, um, I'm not in the position to understand everything, but I would mm -hmm. say in the same sense that you were lucky enough to have that inspiration or that thought happen to you, you know, the same way you got out of it, maybe, you know, I would believe that your younger sister will have that same chance. Now, what I would say is you know in, in any way manner or form that you can try and help her get to that point without saying it directly well why not just She's say too it little right now yeah, I, 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 too little. i'm saying this all could just be being a child right like a, a female yeah. child they're generally prone to outbursts and straight you know what i mean like until they're about eh, 20 <laughs> well you know it, it's hard watching somebody else uh suffer uh, yes. So yeah. when, you're, when you're helpless to do anything about it. But especially when they become adults, they're, even if they're making horrible decisions, you're just, at some point, you have to let it go. Yeah. Which, or. <laughs> well, she's still a four-year-old child, so, you know, that, yeah, I'm not saying. Yeah, like four and seven, or four and nine. So. Right. So it's, it's a different situation, and I don't know the full, you know, I don't know all the yeah. information. Um but yes, yeah, I know. I don't think that started with I'm looking for advice. But no, um, <laughs> well, I don't care if you have advice, give it. No, that's yeah. to, to the best of your ability, try and help her 
to, you know, make it to the point that you did where you could recognize the, the, the toxic repetition of, of, of certain behaviors what she's doing? and change it. Anyway, oh. so. Oh, here's what you need to do. Okay. Have you ever been on the telephone? Let me tell you. <laughs> on the telephone, yeah. right? somebody's like, you got a pen? And you don't have a pen, but you just reflect what you say. Yeah, I got a pen. <laughs> what is it about that? And then you go to the drawer and you're searching through it and you can't find a pen. <laughs> and they're saying the numbers already? And you're like, yeah, I got it. 852, yeah. That's why I have my cell phone. I just put you on speaker. There you go. Uh, you have the pen in and it doesn't work. So <laughs> oh, that's the worst. So then obviously you put uh, it right back in the, the same drawer <laughs> so that the next time you're in the same dilemma, you can grab another pen that does yet not work. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, this is going to the top of this is opening the show. I just want you to know that. <laughs> oh wait, we changed the show around? Yeah. Oh, I don't really listen to our own voice. Oh my god. We yeah, there's some some of it's out of order. <laughs> See, Jackie, okay. here's here's the thing. Like uh doing stand up comedy, like I had to listen to my material to to check on like, you know, my timing and things like that. She still it's, doesn't listen. Uh -huh. And it's very weird because when you listen to your own voice, you're like, oh my goodness, I sound like that. And you it's sound weird. like my sister. No, you don't. Well, it's oh, you. you might. Yeah. It's I weird sound like him. When I when I first listened to myself talk, I was like, "Oh my goodness, I sound like a thirteen year old boy," <laughs> which is which I'm is really strange because when I talk to thirteen year old boys, they always say, "Please, Mister, <laughs> if you just let me go, I promise not to tell anybody." <laughs> oh, that sounds so bad in so many ways. <laughs> After all the child rape jokes. Yeah, that's what I went to. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Sorry, I, I knew you knew where I was going, but I'm going yeah, to Yeah, of course going. I did. Yeah, yeah. She really liked your joke about why we keep the gun, but let's not get into that. <laughs> let's, let's, let's not get that recorded. <laughs> uh, no, actually, um, Jackie, just so you know, none of the show is like, actually out of order, but I, there are times where I move a clip to the front of the show just because... That's fine. Yeah. I'm just not going to listen to it. I well, remember I, the conversation. Uh, my voice, I can't get, a, like, I can't get past it. 20, 20 minutes. Dude, I tried. I, I took your advice and it failed. Okay. <laughs> I'm used to it. I sound like Tim. I I mean, you I don't hear don't, it, but. Though. You sound like Joe Rogan. No way. My voice is not that deep. It can't be. There's really no way. Oh, may, I guess maybe. Yeah, it does to me. Oh, weird. Tim? I, I might be listening to your voice differently <laughs> than other people listen to voices. That's true. Possible. It's, it's like bad. telling a person that blue is blue when it's really green. Oh, well, my God. <laughs> Vsauce. You're, yeah, okay, yeah, Vsauce, exactly. You know, if you say this is red, they go, yeah, it's red. They could be looking at blue, but they've learned their whole life that that's red. So, right. I kind of want to do that to my daughter. Well, what's to say that me and you don't see blue as red in each other's eyes? Say that again? I, I don't quite What? All right, let's say, all right, what you recognize as blue, right? Okay. Okay, can you describe it to me any other way than blue? <laughs> yes. How? You would use it by referencing other things that are the same color. I'm, I'm aware, right? But what does, how does that help me? Is someone because, that can't see? Well, no. Refer, uh, refer back to that Vsauce episode, but I think you talked about a yes. blind guy where, you know, people are trying to explain color to him and he's like, it's just, no, like, I, I have no frame of reference. I would say blue feels like a deep vibration. Like it's the base of a song. That's what blue would be to me. Huh. That's, that's a weird thing. Uh, man, so there's this girl on Twitter who has the ability to um, taste words. Oh, um, no. <laughs> that would no. How, does, how, does, how does diarrhea taste to her? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was just thinking. So you can write her your name and she'll tell you what, what it tastes like, right? Um, but there are a lot of these people that where they have their, um, some of their senses are crossed. So some people can like, like Jackie, we, me and you were talking about how we can see the mechanics behind feelings. Yeah. That's because our feel and our, our, our sight are intertwined. So we could see oh, like the, cool. the cogs behind like feelings and emotions, right? That's cool. Yeah. So there are people that just have two or three other ones confused. So some people can like taste color. I know that sounds weird and it's usually a drug reference, but there are some people who can like taste colors or sounds. Um, so what would you think blue would taste like? What do I think? Well, I can't taste blue, but if I were to guess I would it taste like, uh, I want to, 
I want to say water, but that's such a boring answer. <laughs> Marshmallows. No. Well, not blue, but I think um, Lu uh, Lewis Black, I think he said it the best when he was talking about there's a green NyQuil and a red NyQuil. And those are the closest <laughs> things you're going to have of some tasting something that tastes like green and something that tastes like blue. <laughs> No, but, but, but sorry, what I was trying to say was, what if, what if what I call blue, I'm looking at a blue cup right now, right? Okay. Okay. What if what you imagine as blue is what I imagine as red? And we, there's no way we would ever be able to get that through to each other. Because if I were to show you a picture and we both pointed at what we called blue, who's to say that if the third party was there or even just between the two of us that we're seeing the same color? Well, it's just what we identify as the same color. The only thing I would say, and again, this doesn't, it, it, it might have a disconnect, but the one thing I would say is that there are other things that are also involved with color. Like if you're feeling blue, then you're feeling yes. down, right? right? Or if you're feeling yellow, or if you see red when you're angry, right? Or if there's Yeah, a, he's a yellow belly. <laughs> right? Green with envy. Yeah. Right. So there, there is that aspect, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to allow people to see a different color when they're seeing something else just because it's tied to emotion, then they just tie that same color to that same emotion. Correct. Well, but color doesn't exist. Yeah, color, it's our perception of it. Color is all in your mind. Right. There is, there is no color in the world. Uh, it, it's just our brain's interpretation. And so, I mean, there's no way to know uh, so when television was in black and white, that was before we had brains to interpret? Or <laughs> yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Okay. Thanks, I'm man. Looking at, I'm looking at your uh, picture here. Have you, did you gray out a little bit? Is it a drawn photo or a real yeah, one? Drawn photo. Or did you gray no, out? No, we, no, no. That was an artist's rendering. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> we don't have gray hair, neither of us. <laughs> I, got, I, I had like a three-inch gray hair in my beard the other day. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it was just, like, it was like, I, I feel like that Brian Regan, like it was just sticking straight out. And, and I was like, oh my God. And I was like, Sachiko, look at this. And she tried to pull on it. And like, she pulled hard. Oh. It hurt. Well, cause she thought it wasn't attached to me. And I, and I go over to Dylan and I go, Dylan, look at this. And I point out the hair and he goes, oh my God, Papa, are you turning into a cat? <laughs> <laughs> And on that, we should wrap it up. I said, I said not right now. <laughs> not right now. Just okay. Not, not well, right now. Can I can I say something? Well, actually, yeah, two things. Just two. Of things. course. One, one. I would like to say thank you very much, Jackie. Oh, for what? You know, thank you. Uh, I, I don't know what has prompted you to uh, to do whatever it is that guys are doing. But, uh, you know, uh, I sent a Matt is very happy. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, and, and so thank you. Uh, oh, and the other thank is you for having a son that is yeah. awesome like Matt. Thank you. And then, and then the other thing is, is, uh, you know, music is my first love and, and some people, uh, don't understand it. But as a friend of mine said, it, true musicians uh, get this. Uh, you know, music is not, it's not like it's a matter of life and death. It's far more important than that. <laughs> so uh, there you go. I feel that way all the time. I like that. Thank you very much, Bill. Are yeah. Thanks, Deb. I thought tomorrow was Father's Day. That's why I set this up today, by the way. And it's next week. <laughs> so. You idiot. <laughs> Well, he said, Happy Father's Day. And I was like, thanks. And he's like, well, no, because it's Father's Day there now, right? And I was like, no, that'd be seven days from now. I didn't like, Japan's not eight you. days in the future? You told me this, and I didn't correct you. I just assumed in Japan it was a different day. <laughs> I'm an idiot, like, too. Uh, we're not oh, idiots. We're, we're highly intelligent. We're just so dumb sometimes. Like, I thought Touch of Grey added gray streaks to your hair. <laughs> it takes you know, one out. <laughs> Thank you, Dodo. Well, most people can be generally intelligent, but then, like, you make a mistake. But then, like, when you're driving and somebody makes, like, a, a, a terrible move, you're like, oh, that person's horrible. And you just, like, chop it up to that one single, you know, isolated incident. But then, you know, when you make a mistake, you're like, oh, oops, I'm having an off day. 
That's true. Yeah. Perspective. Yeah. So, what's it like to have gray hair, Jim? Yeah. I I I was proud. Like I was happy to get a gray hair. Like <laughs> I, I, I'm waiting for my gray hair. <laughs> I think you're waiting for hair. Oh, All right, that, was, that was low. Yeah, I know. Long, beautiful gray hair. Like I want to gray out. You want to Khaleesi it? Yes. Yes, I do. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I, I know the terms. I'm, I'm still hit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'm pretty sure we should probably wrap up. Yeah, I was just like two and a half. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, including the 15, 20 minutes before. We're coming up on, yeah. Well. All right, guys. I, I'm tired. I know. You get off the phone. Later, guys. I love you all. I'll, I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Love you. I'll send you I the guess. recording once I figure out how to send it. Email. Love you all. Goodbye, everybody. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.